mom who knows nada. My name is Brianna, and this is the Mama Knows Nada podcast. Today, we're chatting with Maggie. She's a new mom who's got quite a story to tell <laughs> about <laughs> everything that has to do with mom life happening <laughs> conveniently at the same time. So welcome, Maggie. Thank you so much for being here. No problem. Thank you for having oh, me. Oh, of course. I'm I'm really excited to share how uh, crazy mom life can be with the, the story of yours. So um, how did you feel when you found out you were going to be a mom? Um, I was so excited. Uh, I was, after the excitement kind of wore off for a hot second, I was terrified. But, uh, you know, we got married and we wanted to just kind of go for it. So, you know, we were trying and trying and trying and, and then the one day came where I took the test and it was positive and I was home alone and I really can't hold like any secrets <laughs> or anything and my husband was at the clinic and I called him and I was like I'm pregnant like I'm pregnant and he's like I can't believe you could have wait till I got home but <laughs> it was good at least I did it through FaceTime but I was really excited I was ready for the new chapter that's awesome oh yeah. that's really exciting um yeah what have you found is difficult about becoming a mom? I would say um, blocking out everyone's opinions mm. and, you know, everyone loves to give advice. Mm -hmm. Our families love to give advice and it's just kind of remaining to who you are and what you want to do, I think is the hardest battle because you just don't want to. I'm a, I'm a people pleaser, so I don't like upsetting anyone. Mm -hmm. um, and then becoming a mom, I realized like, if I'm going to upset myself by not following what I believe, like I, I have to change that mindset. So that's probably the hardest. Thing. Totally. I'm the same way. And I also realized yeah. like, especially as I've gotten older and probably like with the, how much has changed because of like pandemic and kind of having to just rely on your like e immediate cohort that like everybody else is like thinking about themselves, you know? <laughs> so, right. So Absolutely. Why, why am I going to think about them and not me first? You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know if that's the best mentality to have, but like, I've just realized no. like, you know, all I have is my husband for a lot of, for a lot of things. And so right. it doesn't really matter what anybody else thinks. And, you know, like kind of learn the hard way. So I told that totally resonates with me. Um, yeah. So you have your little girl and what yeah. was easier natural for you becoming a mom? Um, I would say calming her down. I was, mm. I had my niece when my sister and brother were way older than me. I was the surprise child. So I became an aunt at 12. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. So I've been around kids for basically a lot of my life. Um, so having Layla, I was nervous to see like, oh my gosh, can I actually, you know, nurture mm -hmm. and, and calm her down mm -hmm. and figure out what she wants. And it, it came a lot easier than I thought it was going to uh, come and changing diapers. I mean, having five nieces and nephews, it was really easy to change a diaper and just go in for it. So that's awesome. Those were probably the two. Yeah. I, yeah. I think that's a really good point. I was not around kids a lot and I didn't ever really like to babysit or anything. So when I had my <laughs> son, I was, the I was, I came naturally, but I was like, uh, I, don't, I guess it was like an instinct, but yeah, you know, I was like, Oh, I can do this. Like I do know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah you're like do i really have like the, what it is i don't know is it a thing but yeah it just comes to you but it's, it's pretty awesome now is there yeah. anything that you found particularly surprising or um that you didn't really expect about motherhood um i would say the sleep schedules sleep schedules for me were like the biggest thing that i really didn't mm. prepare for um, oh. I never really thought about it. Yeah. I was like, Oh, you know, she just will sleep when she sleeps and she'll sleep, you know, by herself or next to us. It'll be fine. And I, I did not prepare as well for that as I should have until she came. Now I'm getting better of like, Oh, we need a schedule. She needs naps, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was all about those naps. Cause I was like, this kid needs to sleep so I can have a break. <laughs> Yeah, like, yeah. Now I'm like, oh, it's twelve thirty. Like we gotta, we gotta get on your nap. You're going, kid. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You had a lot of transitions happening simultaneously. Um, let's talk a little bit about them. You were pregnant, you were moving, and you were setting up a business. Can you just like, yeah. however you want to attack that? Can you go into that story because it's pretty crazy. Yeah. So um, 
I met my husband in chiropractic school, um, like three months into chiropractic school. We dated for a year, then got engaged and then got married within that second year and then got pregnant within our final year of school. So that final year of school, um, I was wrapping up board exams, uh, you know, clinical mentorship, all the things. And then we decided to go ahead and we wanted to really work together. We didn't want to have an associateship position. We wanted to have our own business. So we kind of pulled the plug on that. And near graduation, we started to set all of that up while I was, you know, getting into the second trimester. So the nausea and everything kind of subsided and just now focusing on the business. And then we decided let's take maybe three months after the baby's born, just kind of get everything situated, but we want to open up by October. So that mean we would have had to move in June because we were doing July. So I was originally going to have the baby in Georgia that all shifted the third trimester. And then I had to find the doctor. Then we ended up graduating Friday and we moved Saturday. So, and then it was crazy because our house wasn't ready. So we were living with my parents, my big old English sheepdog Aww. and us in one room waiting for the baby. So it was crazy. It was a roller coaster. That's for sure. And then, so the baby comes in July and then you move again, right? Mm -hmm. When your house is ready. Yeah, so we had the lease for the office start in June. Uh, so we moved everything from our townhouse and put it all in the office. So the two back rooms were just filled with boxes of our home and our clothes and everything. So I'm going there to like grab a dress or grab shoes and crazy. crazy times. Yeah, so we move in there and then move out in August and finally move into our house. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, what kind of, what pressures yeah. did you feel? Anything? Um, so many pressures. <laughs> uh, the one pressure of, you know, becoming doctors. So mm. I had to get all of my schooling in order. Then the pressure of becoming a mom and wanting to give my time and attention to my new baby. Um, and then opening a business, making sure we actually open kind of successfully. Wow. And I, you know, I'm kind of the realist in the relationship. So I look at all of like the business -y side of stuff. Mm -hmm. So that that's a lot of pressure. Um, but breastfeeding was a huge pressure for me mm. too, just because I was pulled in so many directions that it was more of like a, a like a task. Yeah. And I don't, I didn't want it to be that, you know, so that that was difficult. I ended up pumping and then just kind of going to formula so I could have my husband help and um, that was probably the biggest pressure that I had yeah. um, after having Layla. Yeah. It was like, you felt like, uh, but you know, I think it's, I think it's so hard sometimes when, you know, like they always say like, Oh, breast is best. And now they're saying like, okay, fed is best. I think it's also like dependent on the person, you know, like not, you can't do right. everything and right. you know, like it's pumping for a pumping in and of itself is a job, you know, if you want to be yes. like quote unquote successful at it. So like, I think good for you for understanding <laughs> like what, what you needed to do in order to feel like you were like doing everything for your child. Do you know what I mean? Like you're doing all of these things yeah. and you're like, okay, well, if I really want to be present for her formula is better. I think that's, I think that's right. a really good thing that we don't talk about a lot about. It's like not, yeah. it doesn't, not everything's right for everybody, you know, like, right. Especially when you're doing all of those things. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Oh no. my goodness. <laughs> yeah. No, I was, I was happy. I kind of moved into that direction and just, she was happier. I was happier. Mm. It was just more of a calming environment. No, oh, I like, that's a good point too, because the kids will feed off that energy. Like they know when you're like anxious or, yeah. you know, and so I'm sure like she felt that for you, like, being, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. it's funny. It's funny mm -hmm. how little, yeah. even those little, those beans are so little, they're so perceptive, even though they're so tiny. I know. The other yeah. thing I'm really interested about it, because I feel like this would be my worst nightmare, but you had to, you moved from Georgia to Florida and so you had to have a whole mm -hmm. different like doctor and hospital and like plan for her yeah. delivery. How did you navigate that? Um, it was interesting time of navigating that one. Um, luckily where our office is right next door was an OB mm. and 
you know, I reached out and I said, you know, we're moving down, we're opening up right next door. Would you take a patient in their third trimester? Because I, I came in and I was 35 weeks, like wow. I was way, way down the line. Um, and they said, yes. And I was under the assumption, which lesson learned I need to ask is where they deliver the, the babies. I thought it would be Flagler hospital ended up being in Daytona. So huge different scenario yeah. than I had in my head. Like I was reaching, researching, you know, Flagler hospital, looking at their maternity wing, like all these things. And then I get here, go into my first appointment at the very end. They say, all right, you have three hospitals, Jacksonville, Gainesville, or Daytona, <laughs> pick which one that's where you're going. I was like, oh. Okay. <laughs> like, <it's great. laughs> so that was very interesting uh, for sure. Yeah. And they're so, all like an yeah. hour away <laughs> at least. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was interesting. The lucky thing was my husband's parents, they live in Daytona. Mm -hmm. So we said, you know, if we had to go down there and stay there for whatever reason, we had that. So that's why we kind of went with Daytona, but mm. yeah, the, that 45 minute drive, not my favorite situation. Well, especially if but... you're in labor and like, if that, I don't know what your, yeah. that situation was for you, but if you had to wait to, you know, like, are we going to make it? Are we going to make it? Are we going to have this baby on the right. side of the road? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you, you go and they're like, all right, well, since you live an hour away, let's do five minutes. Contractions are five minutes apart. Then you make your way down because you got a bit of a drive. We had kind of one, you know, false alarm. I didn't know what to expect. Never been through life before. So we did the drive at like 3 a.m., five minutes, you know, apart, just not super, super strong. And they're like, no, 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 do three minutes apart. So then we go back and it's just the up and down game of do we do five, do we do three? What's the traffic? You know, you're on 95. I don't know. It's crazy. Oh my gosh. Well, obviously it was successful because yeah. she's here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't see any news stories about this. So. No. <laughs> no, she's here. She she held on. She's good. Good girl. <laughs> yeah. One less thing to worry about, right? One less cluster to have. Yes. Now, yeah. So how did you make all of these things happen? Like did you have any support or help to do you know, the business, the move, the baby? Like how did you get through all that? Um, honestly, it was, uh, my husband, I would say it was the biggest person because he knew exactly what we were going through with the business wise, with, you know, what we had to do for graduation. And I mean, the house, we never owned a house before. So that was just, we figured that one out. But, um, luckily my parents love St. Augustine so much. The time we put our townhouse up for sale, they put their home up in Philly for sale. They found a place and they ended up moving down. Mm. So they were a huge support system for me just because I didn't think I'd have my mom super close to Aww. me distance wise. And I kind of lucked out that I did. That's so awesome. that was really helpful. Yeah. Yeah. And then his parents have been great as well. So honestly, the parents and my husband, I, I would say are my biggest support. Dang. That's awesome though. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So the theme of this season's podcast is staying true. Oh yeah. And so how do you do that for yourself and your family? So it took me a, a few weeks, you know, a month or so to really figure out how to stay true to myself. Um, I would say now I can really say uh, I got into audibles and hmm. just podcasts and I love to read. Hmm. And I realized once I have a baby, my time for reading has really come to a halt. And it was the one thing I did before I went to bed and it just, hmm. you know, it put me in a really good headspace. Um, so I started to pick that up again and I would take my tea. I love drinking tea and reading my books. So at least I can do the audibles in the car at home. Mm. Um, and then having the beach so close has been super grounding for me. Mm. And we make it a point to go every week and just walk as a family and just kind of reconnect, talk about our highs and lows of the week and mm. then kind of regroup. And that's been really helpful. I like that highs and lows of the week. And, and I second that yeah. beach thing. Like, I tell my husband all the time, I'm like, I don't want to leave Florida because I, I like, I need the ocean and we were like a 10 minute drive, right. but you know, that's a, yeah. only a 10 minute drive before I was, you know, in Baltimore, we were three hours in Dallas. We were, yeah. you know, like I lived everywhere. So I, I <laughs> totally feel that same thing. Like the ocean is so grounding and I mean, it's been cold mm -hmm. this week, so we haven't been, but like 
same thing. Like our yeah, family's <laughs> neither, right? Our, our family is really big on the beach and like mm-hmm. enjoying it. I just feel like it's so um, reinvigorating, you know, like it gives you absolutely rejuvenates you just that. I don't know the negative mm-hmm. ions, if you will. Um. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, it's, it's so nice to be that close. Oh, it's, it's totally a blessing. And then when it comes to yeah. like routines, um, what do you guys do to keep like yourselves on the to-do list? Like both as individuals, but also like your partnership. Um, we're really big into vision boards. Uh, we started doing vision boards when we were dating and we just kind of stick with it. And, hmm. um, We kind of readjust every three months or so, but on a weekly basis, every Sunday night, once the baby's down for bed, we sit at the table, we grab our notebooks and we kind of just write out like, what are our goals for this week? What's our um, goals for the month? And then where we want to see ourselves at the year. Um, And for us, that one makes us really accountable for what we want and making sure like we're staying true to what Mm. we want in life and then coming together and saying, you know, what's our personal goals? What's our relationship Mm -hmm. goals? What's our family goals? And just kind of having those prioritized has been really helpful, helpful, keeping us on that to-do list. Dang. That's like so insightful (laughs) and so like, well, right. Managed. (laughs) No, Uh, no, no. (laughs) <laughs> Dang. All right. I say that to my husband all the time. Like, let's do this. Like, we got to write it down. We got to talk about it regularly. I mean, our lives are a little different. We're all over the place, but, um, but I love that idea. And I've been asking him for that for, I don't know, how old's my son? Four. So about four years. <laughs> like, can we do this? Cause that like, it, right. and, and I think there is that like mind body connection. Like when, especially like for women, mm-hmm. God, I feel like I said the same thing. Um, you would like to re- like write it down, you know, like, to have it there and then to, I mean, they say that about like journaling and just putting things on paper. Oh yeah. I, that is a really good thing. And I love how you guys are just like doing it all the time and you're doing it together. We're trying. Yeah, we're trying. It took us a few months, but we're like back on track with it. And it from before to now it's, it's crazy how much it really helps you. I was going to say, Oh, have you been busy or something? (laughs) Yeah, just, you know, just a little bit. It's ordinary thing. Just a little bit. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> um, so now that you're, you and your husband, you, you're running your chiropractic, um, uh, your chiropractic practice, and how does your work yes. allow you to stay true as a mom? Um, well, being able to kind of make our own hours mm. um, has kind of been the best thing for me staying a mo- like a mom mm. and being able to say like, you know what? Um, I think you can handle this today. Like I'll do the emails and everything, but I want to stay home with Layla and vice versa. If he, he really wants to stay home, we kind of flip off. Oh, that's and awesome. Yeah. The hours have been super helpful. Um, and just not having that pressure of like, we're doing something wrong because we're not at work. We're working from home or something like that. That's mm-hmm. been extremely helpful. That's awesome. Like, and that dad can yeah. have like that quality time too. And I love that. Yeah. That's yeah. important. Yeah. I feel, I feel like it's really important for dads to get that, that one-on-one time too with baby. It also like gives them, absolutely. I don't know how your husband is, but like mine was like really, I want to say really nervous at first. He's always been like a hands-on dad, but he had a few moments, like, especially at the beginning when he was like, help me. What do I do? You know? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And and I think that like once I just kind of let him figure it out, it was like better Mm -hmm. for him then because he didn't want to do it like wrong or not my way. Right. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. I can be a little like, I don't want to say controlling, but I'm very specific. Me too. Yep. So I kind of had to like, let, let go of that and give him space to do it. So I love that you guys do that. That's amazing. Um, yeah. And how does, how how does your role as a mom help, help you in your work life? Um, honestly, becoming a mom has taught me so much about myself Mm. prior to being pregnant. Um, I was always so nervous in school, like lab practicals. I was a perfectionist. So it's like, I have to be perfect. What if I do in the real world? And like, something's not working, but it's the only way I know how, like, how am I going to help people? Um, and then having Layla and just saying like, no, you have to be confident in yourself. Like you can do a lot more than you think you can. Mm -hmm. Um, that's been like a huge eye opener for me. And that's really helped with work because that self doubt, I mean, there's always a little self doubt, but it is much less than what it was because I know 
I birthed the baby, so I can I can figure this out. <laughs> I am capable. Um, yeah. You know that. Cat dang, that says so much to me. I feel I've had this like epiphany in the last few weeks and months. I'm probably working over like in the last year. Similar kind of thing. Like yeah. I'm capable. Like I, and I, and I started because I kept saying mm-hmm. to my son, like he's almost four and and he wants to dance. And he's like, "Mommy, I, I'm a bad tap dancer." And I'm like, "You just need to practice. Like you're capable. Yeah. You know, you gotta try. Yeah. And you might fail and you you might mess up, but that's okay, right?" Mm-hmm. And then I got to a point where like one day I just had this like click, and I was like. Oh shit. Like I'm saying that just as much for hit for me as I am for him. Like I can do this. Yeah. I can mom, like I can do all this, you know? And you're like, I was like, yeah. damn, you know? <laughs> so to have you say that too. And like total strangers here. I'm like, yes, yes, we can do it. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't mean it's not every day. We're as capable as other days. No. It doesn't mean it's not hard. No. It's just like, we got to remember sometimes yep. like, we are able, you know, we just got to give yeah. ourselves the mm-hmm. space to be able. That's awesome. I love that. Exactly. Love that so exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, how, what advice or what have you done to be able to stay true to your partners and to your kids? And how would you share that with other people? Um, I would say be caught, ki- like, just be kind to yourself. Mm. And that really rubs off on like your partner and your kids. When, you know, we first were moving into the house and I was super stressed out. Like I just wasn't being kind to myself and therefore I was getting mad at Mm. things that I shouldn't be getting mad at that my partner would do and be like, why am I even getting mad over this? So stupid. Mm -hmm. Um, I've come to slowly realize like if I'm not kind to myself, it's just going to be like a domino effect, you know? So you kind of have to surrender some things that you don't really want to surrender, but you have, like you have to, because it's not really important to you, Mm. you know? So you just got to be kind. Like surrender what, if there's any examples that you're open to sharing, I'd totally love to know. Um, for me, I think it's like the, I, hated sometimes I had to leave for work and Mm. I had, you know, my grant, the grandparents would watch the baby. So I had like a schedule where I had things that I had laid out for Layla. And then sometimes I come home and they wouldn't be, they wouldn't be done. Nothing would be there. Mm. And it's like, if I'm not watching her, I had to surrender and say, she's in good hands. Like, you know, I can't control everything Mm -hmm. and it's not going to be good for me. It's not going to be good for my husband or Layla. So, um, it was really having that moment of like, this too shall pass. You're all good. Everyone's fine. Everyone's safe. Like just let it go. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Yeah. Especially like, I mean, we've already said this, like, if you like things a specific way, if you're a perfectionist or like me, I'm a little OCD, you know? So I like things yeah. in a very yeah. work like, that. and it doesn't necessarily have to make sense yep. to anybody else's brain. It just makes sense in my brain. And right. I'm very well aware of that. Absolutely. But like, yep. can we do like this? And so I like, <laughs> yeah. I've been trying so hard for that too. And I'll give an example of this. My son is working on his letters, you know, writing and holding like mm-hmm. pens and stuff. So I got him this letter yeah. book and he does it like backwards. Like instead of like drawing an L right. like down and over, he goes right over and up, you know? And I'm like, right. that's not how you do it. And then I'm like, you know what, <laughs> you know what? He's going to do it his way. Yep. And just like, let it, I got to let it go. You know, like, yeah, uh, yeah, I know it's so hard. It's so hard, but yeah, <laughs> it is really hard. But then I remember, yeah. I, and I had another conversation with the dad, Eric, and he was like, we talked a lot about how that's his journey. You know, like this, mm-hmm. our kids are on their own journey, you know? And if I step mm-hmm. in every time for him to do it my way, I'm not respecting or being considerate or kind for his journey. And I was like, Ugh, right. I need to not you know, get, get in the way of like his path. Like I'm here to guide him, right. not like, you know, use him as like a pawn, you know, anyway, it's true. Yeah. Parenting it's is so hard. Ah. <laughs> it's so hard. I really, I didn't expect how hard like the internal struggle would be. Oh, uh, it's like a wrestling match every day. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So how do you stay grounded and present in your parenting? Uh, honestly, I'm a big talker. So I think if I can talk about how I'm feeling Mm. and just have someone listen, a big thing 
that we've been working on of like, if I talk to you, you don't need to fix it. Sometimes just listen, let me vent yeah. and I'll, I'll fix it myself. Um, but as long as I can really talk and getting outside and ev- like just sunlight and everything, yes. they really, they really help me and they really help me stay grounded. It's super weird, I guess, but it, it would help. No, I think it's funny. Like then there's been so many studies done that you need X amount of sunlight a day and all mm-hmm. like fresh air. Like yesterday, like I was so sore, but like I went for like a three mile walk and like pushed the stroller just to get outside. Right. It was cold. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it was cold. It was very cold. But yes. To your point, it was like inside all day, you know, it was so overcast. So the time the sun came out, I was like, no, we're going to go mm-hmm. get some fresh air and some sunshine just because, yeah. you know, absolutely. And I think being in Florida, we're a little absolutely. spoiled. So when we don't oh, have yeah. it, you're like, you like really feel it. I don't know, like that's yes, like yes. It's not seasonal depression for me. I don't have it, but I know people who do have it. Right. Yeah. And I no, think it's, it's legit. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I can only go like half a day if it's cloudy or something inside the house. I'm like, I need to get outside. Yeah. Like, I need to do something. I can't do this. Yeah. I'm right there with you. Yeah. It's pretty. It's pretty gnarly. Um. Yeah. I was going to say. Um. This is what I like to call the nada, and it's like. Three basic questions I ask in every interview, <laughs> but I think it's really, I just like to see what people say. So, um, what is the most useless information or recommendation you received about parenting? I have two things. The mm-hmm. one I would say is, um, as soon as she was born, the feeding of like every two hours on the hour. And if you're like a minute late, you know, something bad is going to happen. Like she's going to starve or something that was so useless to me because if she didn't want to eat, she wasn't going to eat. Right. So it didn't matter if it was two hours, two and a half hours, like I can't force her to eat. Mm-hmm. Um, so once I just looked at my husband, I was like, I'm not doing the same or like, this is so useless to me. I'm not, she will eat. She will be fine. She's gained weight. Like we're good. That was super useless. Um, and then the other thing was so many people told me that if I held her and she slept in my arms, like she was, she was never going to sleep in a bassinet by herself. Mm. And like at two weeks old, like I should be putting her, you know, in a bassinet by herself and letting her be. And I personally think that was so useless because she only knows at two weeks old, like to be held, to be felt, mm-hmm. uh, fed, slept, you know, um, so yeah, those, those two things, I think, you know, down the line, if we have another kid, they will be Bye. useless information. I will not listen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. No, thanks. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything you wish you would have been told about motherhood? Um, the mom guilt, the mm. mom guilt for me, no one really told me after you have a kid, like that internal, like not in your stomach that you just it doesn't really go away and you think oh no I need to take a bath or I need to take a shower I need to go grocery shopping Mm -hmm. and there's like this little guilt thing that comes up inside your stomach and uh, still working on tools to really help get through that one Um, and for work we have to do a lot of continuing ed hours so we have to go and take seminars out of out of the state and all the things and we had to do that in november and it was the first time i had to leave her here and then go and do that the mom guilt was so strong but we we got through it and i I wish i would have known more about how to handle that Mm -hmm. and like how to mentally talk to myself about that i think that's tricky because it hits different women in different ways at different times. Like, yeah, I couldn't, I was always really grateful to leave my son and always really happy yeah. to come back. Um, yeah. and then as he's gotten older, I've gotten a lot better about things, but I, I think for me, I feel guilty because like, I need a break and I know I need a break and that's, yes. it's yeah. not necessarily like, I don't mind leaving him, but at the same time, it's like knowing that I, I just need my space from him makes me feel yeah. like I'm, I'm like, yeah, I guess that's like the kind of mom guilt I have. I'm like, yeah, uh, you know, yeah. but now, yeah, yeah. It ha- no, go ahead. I was going to say now that he's older, I feel like he needs a break from mom too. So it like, works out. <laughs> 
<laughs> it really balances out. <laughs> Just ride the wave. Oh, poor I kid. It. Yeah. So I don't know. Hope I don't know if that will help you down the line. If she's like, all right, mom, I'm over you. But like, my kid loves school. He loves like going to his grandma's house. Like, oh yeah. But it's like, mommy, and I'm like, we can't do what we do at Grammy's at home, kid. No, we can't. <laughs> right? No. No, uh, there's a difference. There's a difference. <laughs> uh, do, you, do you have any unsolicited advice for parents? Mm, I would say um, take those first 40 days, because 40 days is super important for like a woman to take after mm. she gives birth. And I really didn't... Uh, get how important it was and i would probably say to them like take those 40 days kind of go into hibernation and just lock down if you can even if it's two weeks just completely shut the outside world down and just kind of be be with ever like be with each other mm. and the baby yeah i would say that yeah if possible totally i wish that i yeah. mean i was home with my son but my husband was traveling for work and it was like i don't know what i'm doing either <laughs> Right. Yeah. This is my, yeah. This is my first kid. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, just winging it. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God! Literally every day I'm winging it. It's a. Uh, it's um. That's why yeah. I'm the mom and was not it because every day I'm learning something. So. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I looked at my husband yesterday and I was like, Hey, you know, she's been six months this week. Like we made it six months and we knew nothing. So. Okay, we will just keep going. And the next six months are going to be just as, you know, developmental oh, and yeah. educational. And, oh, mm -hmm. this is a question I wanted to ask just randomly. Do you, um, yeah. because you guys are both chiropractors, do you adjust your daughter mm -hmm. too? Yes. Yeah. Um, we adjusted her as, same, um, as soon as she came out, we, we adjusted her. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, yeah. Thanks. You can adjust them uh, with your fingers, just like if you're testing the ripeness of a tomato, that's kind of the pressure you use. Hmm. And then as they get older, you can do uh, different techniques. But yeah, she's she's been adjusted. Nice, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah. you guys are chiropractors. Yeah. I figured as much. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, just curious. Uh, any yeah. anything else you'd like to add for our listeners? Hmm. That's a good question. <laughs> I would just say. Just keep rolling, rolling with the roller coaster. You know, mm. every day is a new day and a new experience. And you can say, oh, you know, next day, like, I'll do this differently. And it probably won't even have, happen the next day. Uh, so you just never know what you're going to get. That is, <laughs> is a great time. Yeah. That is so true. Every day is an adventure. Amen to that. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, yes. <laughs> I'm the mom who knows nada. My name is Brianna. This is Maggie. And until next time, have fun learning all the things you didn't know you needed to know. Yeah.